everybody. Um, my name is Josh Gulledge, and uh, I'm going to talk about PHP 7. And uh, before we get into that, um, I'll share a little bit about me. So uh, I'm a web developer. I work for Lippert Components in uh, Elkhart, Indiana. And I've been there about two years. Before that, I worked at Bethel College for about nine years um, as a web developer. So uh, most of my time in and such has been uh, public facing, uh, marketing related um, material, uh, doing a lot of PHP related work. So um, that's kind of what I'm going to hit on. PHP 7 came out uh, December of 2015, so just a couple months ago. And this is a major release for PHP. Um, Zend is the PHP company, and uh, you know they're talking about performance gains of two times and three times the thro throughput versus previous versions. So I'm going to show a couple uh, stacks that they did that Zend has done, and uh, there's a few other uh, deeper ones if you want to look into those if you have interest. And then I want to try and just talk about okay, a little bit of history first uh, about PHP. Uh, and, uh, and we'll move to a couple best practices and some other things. All right. Um, PHP started in basically 1994. Um, it was really first released publicly in 95, and it was designed to resemble C. Um, and I want to share this history to get a viewpoint of what angle PHP came into existence versus maybe a, a language that you use. So it was really designed in 1995 to help, hey, I got an HTML page. Hey, I got a form. I want to do something with this form data, not just have HTML. So PHP really started out as a simple language to help get interactive forms on websites. So we think in 1995, there wasn't a whole lot of JavaScript. There wasn't a whole lot of other things that people are using. So that's kind of um, where it's starting off. And you injected it via uh, HTML comments. 1997 uh, is PHP 2. It's a complete rewrite, lots of new features. Uh, 1998, we have PHP 3. And uh, a guy, Andy uh, Gutzman and Zeev, uh, join. Uh, PHP movement, and they form a group called Zen. And Zen is now recognized as the PHP company. They're the large company behind uh, a lot of the <coughs> enterprise PHP stuff that you'll see if you look up Zen, you'll find that. Um, and this was another rewrite. And then in 2000, <coughs> Game 4 comes out, and this was another uh, rewrite of the language, and this is the second first version of the Zen engine uh, at the core, and this provided just basic uh, object-oriented programming in PHP 4. In 2004, uh, PHP 5 comes out. This is Zen Engine 2. Uh, lots of new objects, models, and uh, designs. Um, there's been lots of minor versions from the first 5.0 branch to 5.6. 5.6 branch was released, I think, about a year and a half ago. Um, and then in 2015, as mentioned, PHP 7 released. Just a quick note, um, there's no PHP 6. PHP 6 was, uh, it kind of took, I guess, the Windows approach and it's one of the skips. <laughs> <laughs> because it was the thing that they talked about forever and ever and ever and ever happened. So. Go. Um, so PHP 7, here we are. Uh, it has Zen Engine 3.0. Um, it for short has been codenamed PHP NG, which is next generation. Um, when I was first reading it, I, I, uh, I thought it was a just in time compiler, but it's actually not a just in time compiler, so it's, there's a little bit of confusion. I wasn't able to narrow it down specifically what, what makes it. Uh, so much faster than the previous version, other than uh, it's a complete rewrite and rewriting how memory is stored uh, and such. All right. Um, so, 
before I get into what PHP has to offer, just a couple things I want to just throw out there. So again, from my point of view, I've worked in public facing web technologies and such. And so a couple statistics here, 81% of websites have PHP on them. Uh, PHP is the number three language on GitHub. Uh, it's recommended in the fourth by Mashable.com, language to learn. Uh, it does have a robust object-oriented programming model. Uh, it has pack package management, um, Composer. It's been around for, I don't know, so, uh, several years, and there's a few different um, ones that have come up that aren't as well known that are um, in that regard, too. Uh, and there's, if you look at this, a, a good option, there's plenty of framework options, but you might feel like overwhelmed by how many options there are. I don't know, a thousand or two, it seems like. Um, but there's really only a handful of ones that are really popular out there that you want to focus on. Um, and of course, uh, there's lots of CMSs out there. Uh, that are popular choices for marketing websites. Probably most everybody's heard of WordPress or, or related uh, Magento, uh, the e commerce solution. Um, so, before I get into PHP 7 a whole lot, I want to cover okay, what it currently was there before um, uh, we do stuff. So, um, object oriented. So, Um, a lot of people have approached PHP, there's, there's still to this day, hey, I want to do it procedurally or functional programming or, hey, I'm, I'm thinking like kind of how I described in 1995, hey, I open up an, a file and I add some logic to that file and I create another file and add the logic to that file and that's a very beginner simplistic approach. And so there's still a number of people that want to hold on to that, um, that's okay, but that's not what the way I prefer. Uh, so we do have auto-loading, um, PSR, I don't actually remember what that stands for, but that's um, a, a few years ago, uh, a group, they called themselves fake P PSR, um, to organize some standards on how to do things in PHP, so this is a recommendation, PS4. Uh, to follow up on when you're creating your classes on an autoloader. Uh, namespaces, class constants, constructors, destructors, uh, uh, static, um, final. Uh, object inheritance, um, so I want to touch on that, and class abstraction. So in, in PHP, it's, I have their list of their traits, it's single inheritance, so you can uh, extend a single class at a time. Only one. You can't extend more than one. So you can, a class can extend uh, an interface or, or can use an interface and extend a class. And a class uh, can uh, use an abstract class. So in PHP, an interface would simply define the methods and how they are, um, the, what those methods uh, uh, parameters are and what th that would return. So it doesn't do anything else, no logic. Abstract classes can do a little bit of both. They can have logic in them so the functions can actually do stuff and uh, they can simply just define a, uh, a method that doesn't do anything. Um, and then that those will have to be then defined in your uh, object that is your final class. Um, so yeah, there's plenty of magic methods. Probably the most popular one or useful one, I think is the best way to say it, is um, two string. So a magic method would be uh, the two string would be uh, you have your class, you create a method to string. So when you say echo class, it calls on that magic method to string and would do whatever logic you would have to do. If you don't do that and you say echo class, uh, it 
depending on what it has, it's probably going to probably going to echo the entire object and a bunch of garbage, and that doesn't make much sense for, for helping anybody. Um, the object references um, and uh, put on their scope: uh, private, protected, and public. So. I'll touch on that just briefly. So a private, so we have our, let's say class A, and our, we have a method, and we call that method private. When you extend class A with class B, you cannot uh, overwrite a private method. So personally, I don't see the use for using private very often unless you have a really good reason for it. Protected is kind of like, um, private in that you can't see it outside of the class, but when you extend a class, you can overwrite it. So that's kind of the best <coughs> in my opinion. Of course, public uh, it's ac accessible anywhere. Um, let's kind of touch on that. All right, so what's new in PHP 7? So we have Zen Engine 3.0 lots of performance uh, improvements. Um, I mentioned some things on there. Uh, the guy who came up with it. Um, so if you're in the PHP world, you've heard of HHVM, which stands for um, Hip Hop Virtual Machine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've seen stuff posted about that. <laughs> so the last so yeah, uh, before that it was Hip Hop Compiler, which came out in roughly 2010, so they started, probably started on that before then. Because of Facebook is using PHP, they want to continue to use PHP, so they uh, developed this um, uh, compiler, the first version, to increase the performance and speed of PHP so that they could still have the ease of the language, but yet the performance of a compiled language, so that was the idea. They replaced that in 2013 with uh, the virtual machine, which was a just-in-time compiler, which then increased the performance again. And so uh, the guys at Zen noticed this and were inspired uh, by that. And eventually, that's how Zen 3.0 came about. Um, this uh, graphic here is from zen.com. So uh, they did some comparison versus uh, Hip Hop Virtual Machine 3.7, uh, PHP 5.6, which is the, the last stable version of PHP released before PHP 7, and just comparing a, a few numbers here. Um, so Magento is an e-commerce solution, and it is, uh, <coughs> I believe, the most popular e-commerce solution they have roughly 30-some 30, 30 percent of the market. Um, we run uh, Magento at uh, Lippert. That's a large part of my responsibility. So the numbers here, um, request per second, PHP 5, 6, 41. Virtual machine, 64. PHP 7, 69. And uh, then we see catalog. So catalog would be a product page with a lot of the products on it. 8, 16, 17, respectively. And so now we jump to WordPress and we see a uh, significant gain in WordPress. So we see uh, more than double uh, the gain from 5.6 PHP 7, a little bit between H, uh, Virtual Machine and PHP 7, um, with 3.6 and 4.1. So I guess a couple things I'll point out I forgot to mention about uh, Hip Hop Virtual Machine. So they also created uh, a language called Hack. So Hack is a derivative of PHP, but they added um, quite a few things to make it more uh, static types. Or, and um, So PHP <coughs> is a loose language. So what, what does that mean? Uh, so you can you have a variable. Variable equals integer. 
the next line variable equals string, the next line variable, variable equals float, the next line variable equals whatever. Um, so to increase performance, again, for a virtual machine, they created, um, uh, I forget what that's called now. Static type versus dynamic. Yeah. And uh, so doing that uh, with the hack language um, came about, which also inspired some of PHP 7, which will, is a feature we'll get to here in a minute. So these are two popular frameworks, uh, Laravel, um, I think from what I see, probably the most popular one. You see again, large uh, increase in performance um, from five, six to seven. And we see uh, on, on these two results, a large increase in performance from the virtual machine to PHP 7. And, um, okay. So, a couple things I'll point out. What's new in PHP 7? Well, there's been a little bit of cleanup. Um, some minor backward <coughs> uh, breaks. So, removed uh, <coughs> replicated functions. Um, there's several of them. Um, the one that's probably the most um, bit, the largest one, I thought I put this on here. Uh, is MySQL. So if you still do, uh, if you did a quick search, I bet you'd find this. I didn't do, I was going to do this, but I forgot. PHP and MySQL, you'll probably come across a blog that says, hey, use the function MySQL underscore connect or MySQL underscore query or whatever those. Well, those haven't been updated since like 2000. <coughs> and with PHP, there's a function that came out shortly after that, uh, MySQL I underscore basically all those functions, uh, replaced MySQL, but because it became so popular in PHP 4, it was kept around, kept around, kept around, and finally got rid of it. Another thing that um, was finally got rid of in PHP 7 is PHP four style constructive methods. And if you remember when I first started talking about PHP 4, it was a, a rather limited um, object oriented model. So uh, a constructor looked like this. You had to name it exactly the name of the class. So you could never have a method named uh, the name of the class. So <laughs> PHP 5 going forward and PHP 7 uh, the constructor looked at like the bottom there uh, with the magic method name constructor. Um, there are several fatal error, recoverable errors uh, that were replaced um, with better exception handling. Um, so if you ever ran a script and you get, hey, fatal error here, fatal error here, uh, yeah. <laughs> That, that's been improved to handle those uh, exceptions better, especially ones that were just like, I can't think of an example right off the top of my head, but it was just like, didn't really, weren't severe at all, they were really minor, uh, that would cause a fatal error. Um, PHP 7 now includes anonymous classes, so um, here's a kind of basic example. Uh, to do this is not quite all shown up there. Uh, so this is a, a class here with an interface at the top. So um, let me just iterate what an interface is. An interface uh, defines a method and a class that uses an interface has to uh, provide the logic for that method. And so this is a class here, and then at the bottom we have the anonymous class, okay, in your application. Uh, and we're just using this. This is how you create a normal class. Um, and this is created an anonymous class here, a new class, and it's implementing logger. Um, create, creates that function there. So Super simple function, just back me out message. Um,
So, scalar type declarations uh, were added, and that's kind of what I was referring back to with um, the language hack. So, previously, in a function, uh, just, to, just to clarify, so a function it lives all by itself. A method is basically a function within a class. So, if, if I confuse anybody. Uh, previously in PHP 5, you could um, declare an array or an object name here. But now we can uh, restrict it to boolean or bool float in string. So several more options that um, improve our ability to uh, refine our code. Um, we also have now return type um, declaration. So see here at the bottom that function, um, sum, we've got uh, A parameter and then B parameter and then colon float. So uh, it has to return a float. Um, yeah, there's, there's a strict mode as well. So um, if strict mode is on, and the first example is in an integer has to be passed in both parameter one and parameter two. If you call on that function and you enable strict mode, it'll produce a fatal error. Uh, if you pass a string or a boolean or whatever else. Uh, same with the return type. Uh, if the method is not passing uh, back and forth. But what will happen and this is the weak language of PHP. If you do pass a string and you're not in strict mode to the first function, it will turn, try to turn it into an integer. So if you type, pass in the string, hello, whatever the integer value of that is, <laughs> which I don't know, will be, it'll be come. And so you'll have some weird number plus another number. So un, unintended consequence there. And the same for, would be for the bottom. If you pass it in junk, uh, string value, it'll try and turn it into an integer or whatever, or a float in that, in that case. Um, also, there's a new uh, uh, null Collinson operator. So, it's kind of small, but uh, so what you see on here, this is used frequently, and I, I think I saw several other things that do this too. So we have this parameter here, uh, dollar sign, underscore get, user. So what that means is get is something that was passed from the URL line. So get parameter. Is a, get is an array. We're looking for um, user. So it's saying, uh, essentially, using the function I set, um, if it's set, then uh, return that value or return nobody. So it's shortening that up a little bit for us. Um, and hopefully, uh, if people, more people start using this because uh, PHP, if you, <coughs> let's just say, you don't even use the I set, you just do uh, dollar sign underscore get parameter echo or echo that out, um, it'll produce a warning for you if it's not set, and so error logs fill up if a program didn't do that. Um, so now we also have a spaceship operator, uh, love the name, and uh, it returns uh, a negative one, a zero, or a one. So I don't know if you guys can read that there in the back. So uh, the first line says echo one, um, is less than, equal to, greater than one, and that would return zero, so it's equal. So the second one is uh, one less than, equal, greater than two, returns negative one. Um, so uh, the right hand's uh, larger, or I guess more probably the, the, the left side's smaller, so we get one. And then we have two less than, equals, greater than one, the left hand is greater, so we have to return to one. 
so another uh, nice feature, so when you start using a lot of namespaces, sometimes you can get uh, a significant number of lines in there. So um, now there's group namespacing, uh, which is available. So, so we see here, use some slash namespace slash class A, some slash namespace slash class B, etc. And now we can just group it in here, some use some namespace uh, bracket, class A, comma, class B, comma, class C, uh, as C, uh, and a couple other examples as well. And then uh, a, a filtered, uh, unserialized, um, uh, this is, allows more options and better security uh, when unserializing an object. And uh, there's been some session improvements and a couple new functions, which I won't cover all of them. Um, so I want to cover package management. So uh, Composer is um, the kind of the standard uh, package management for PHP. Um, they, call, they call it dependency management. Um, it's uh, more so, hey, this project depends on this, include these within uh, your application. And uh, I pointed back to PSR4 when we started talking about uh, object model in PHP. So when you're reviewing and using Composer, you want to be PS4 compliant and, and try to write your stuff for that. Uh, it's a command line tool. Um, you manage uh, with uh, a JSON file, so it's pretty easy to set up and include, hey, these are my five dependencies or whatever it would be. Uh, so you have, there, there's um, kind of really three things to think about on the JSON file. There's uh, the require, so that would be, hey, you require um, to run this package, you need this, and then require dev, hey, so let's say you're you, for the dev environment, you have a unit tester or something like that package included there. Um, what's the third one? Uh, I don't remember. <laughs> Go back to that. Um, so then, then there's package packages.org, which has uh, I want to say thousands of public packages that are available. Uh, to use in your projects. There, there are also quite a few um, private packages um, uh, that are available through the same method uh, as well. So it makes it convenient to include in your, uh, when you're building a project, to include your uh, dependencies that way. Uh, Pair uh, is an older model. Um, it's a little bit more, uh, I would say, cumbersome to do. Uh, then we have Pulley, which is uh, looked at Composer and they, they added several features to it. Uh, it hasn't become as popular, but I believe uh, it uses basically the same methodology in the JSON file and such. It just points to uh, a different, um, it's a different uh, builder. Uh, but it gives you a, a little bit more control in that regards. And, all right, so if you're interested in PHP, where, where would you start? This is where I would recommend uh, a website, phptherightway.com. It kind of goes through a lot of things that I think I pointed out, um, giving you a, a good good place to start, jump off from. Uh, I, I mentioned earlier about my SQL. Uh, I'd recommend looking into PDO if you're doing any um, database stuff. Uh, understanding what PDO does, and uh, it, pretty sure it works with most all of the common uh, databases out there. Uh, and I mentioned coding standards again. Um, PS, PSR one and two are coding standards. Um, 
if you look around a lot of different open source projects, uh, before uh, PHP fake became popular, they would have, hey, this is how we code. Hey, this is how we want to uh, indent and et cetera. So, um, but moving forward, try and stick with that. Uh, Sitepoint.com slash PHP, they have a, a lot of great um, tutorials on there. I left one link on there. Uh, about arrays and how arrays function in DHB. Um, I want to point out just a couple popular frameworks. So we have the language itself, PHP. There's several popular frameworks. Um, Laura Bell, we already talked about in Zen, uh, Symphony, um, or Symphony. Uh, so Zen Framework 3, uh, the third version, I believe, is coming out here real soon. It hasn't already. And a third version of Symphony as well, and um, so a framework. If you, for those of you that may be new to programming or whatever, would be uh, a lot of your basic functionality stuff. If you're not wanting to recreate it, uh, users and um, all of those ones would have an ORM, object relational mapping, uh, for your database interactions. Um, a lot of those complex things maybe you don't want to uh, preview. A lot of them don't have that. I didn't stick up there. There's also a movement to, ha uh, to have a lot of micro frameworks. So the Zen framework has, um, I forget the name of it now, uh, just released a, a routing component. All it does is route. So uh, in the PHP fig, there's uh, PSR7, which defines uh, HTTP messaging, so basically routing. Uh, so, which is, in my opinion, really cool. Now that, okay, hey, I might, you can try out the uh, the new Zend uh, routers version or Laravel's router version and switch them out really easy um, because they're using the same interface. Uh, a couple of popular CMS e-commerce just went out Magento, um, WordPress, Google, Joomla, ModX. Um, the way they approach everything, all four of those, is extremely different. So if you pull up WordPress, um, if you look through the core of it, you'll see some objects, you'll see a lot of functions, you'll see a lot of things together. Uh, and uh, Drupal is, uh, I, haven't, I haven't used it much, just uh, looked at it a little bit here and there. It is pretty much all object oriented. ModX is, I believe Joomla is as well, but the way they approach um, uh, delivering content and, and coding it is quite different. Um, Magento is built on Zen Framework 1. Uh, Magento 2 came out uh, December 2015 as well. Uh, and there's some updates on that. Um, yeah, so I think I'm about out of time. Does anybody have any questions or comments related to anything anything discussed? The uh, coding standards, the PHP fake. Yeah. Is that uh, is that analogous to like if you worked in Python at all with PEP? Like, is there like a PHP fake linter that you can run against your code to make sure that it meets the standards that people like to use? Or there, there are a few of them out there. Um, I haven't, I haven't used one um, myself personally, but there are a couple out there. They're not, they're not nearly as popular in PHP world as they would be in other worlds because it's more of a I would say newer phenomenon. Everybody's wanting, people are saying, hey, we need to get there. But there's still a lot of people, hey, I like to do it this way. So, yeah. Uh, just a comment. Um, you mentioned the Laravel framework. Um, I've actually worked with a company who is based on the Laravel framework, and it's, uh, it's pretty great. Um, but I do know that with the release of PHP 7, they have put out a um, 
basically, they, they call it a homestead. Basically, it's a kickstart for uh, getting PHP 7 up and running and a uh, local um, test server set up uh, equipped with Laravel. So it's a very powerful package. Anybody else? 